By inhaling nitric oxide into the lungs, this gas diffuses into the blood vessels in the areas of the lung that are still open and communicating with the atmosphere. And it opens up those blood vessels a little bit more, and that improves the amount of oxygen that gets into the bloodstream. And therefore, uh, the overall effect is an improvement in the ability of the body to get oxygen into the bloodstream. There is evidence to support that this gas in higher concentrations may actually be virucidal, to be able to inactivate the virus <laughs> inside of the lungs. So the approach we're taking in COVID-19 is that not only use the gas as we do for other conditions, but to use it in much higher concentrations under careful monitored conditions in order to achieve this effect on inactivation of the virus. This project was the idea of a research group at uh, the Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston. And our Vice Chancellor for Research, Dr. Chris Kevel, is a colleague of those working in Boston. And the idea for moving the trial here came uh, between the researchers at Mass General and Dr. Kevel. Dr. Kevel contacted Dr. Scott and I about conducting this research in our intensive care unit. Once our IRB approval was obtained, then we were able to get the equipment in place. Um, we did order that from um, different locations to try to get everything together to provide what you see here. So um, after our approval, we will make sure that training has been completed for all of um, the research team, how to run the machines, how to monitor patients. Two approaches to treating patients who have acquired COVID-19. In patients who are not critically ill, requiring the placement of an endotracheal tube and mechanical ventilation in the ICU, but rather patients who are less sick but still requiring oxygen, we are treating these patients with high concentrations of nitric oxide on a twice a day basis. So they get treated for 30 minutes, 12 hours later they get another treatment for 30 minutes. And the idea behind this treatment is primarily focused on killing the virus. Uh, these patients are able to maintain their oxygenation just with oxygen by a face mask and don't need mechanical ventilation. So in that case, we're targeting uh, the virucidal aspects. In patients who are on mechanical ventilation, where we're using the gas both to improve oxygenation and to target the inactivation of the virus, we're treating those patients continuously. So they receive the gas on a continual basis the entire time that they are receiving mechanical ventilation. The nurse is there all the time. I mean, there's everything from um, different equipment to get together and then different data to document. And so the nurse is there to do that. And we're also there for the patient. Um, you know, we spend a lot of times with the patient, even one-on-one, -on -one, telling them what we're doing, why we're doing it, reminding them what we're doing, because they're nervous, especially now. Um, people get nervous in a clinical trial anyway, but they're scared of COVID, and everyone is. You know, you walk in, and you're head to toe. You have a mask on, you have a respirator on, you have non-permeable clothing on, and, you know, they're scared because you don't want to be around them. So spending a lot of time with the patient is really important. This is a very new trial. This use for effects on a virus are perhaps some of the first trials of this gas being used for that. So it's very possible that if this turns out to be a positive effect, this drug may be able to be used for other viral infections as well that involve the respiratory system. So we have a lot to learn uh, about the, the, the um, actions of this drug as an agent that inactivates viruses. And that's one of the things we hope to learn from this trial.